Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of American and Germany. And today I have Blanton's, the original single barrel bourbon whiskey. No problem there. But I have here a special edition, number seven from the M&P Wine and Spirits Festival in Poland. Interesting. This was dumped on the 22nd of June, sorry, 22nd of January 2016. And this was dumped, it was actually two different barrels. It could be the 1296, which I have, or also the 1297. There were a total of 300 bottles extra just for this wine and um, spirits festival in Poland. Char 4, of course, Warehouse H, of course. If you know anything about Blanton's, Warehouse H is the standard. And this was on Rick number four, and it has 50 ABV. So, um, pa Miroslav Pavel actually selected this or these two barrels. And as you know, I love talking about the whiskey base. Whiskeybase.com, this would be the number 94327. So, you can actually have a look at the label. That's enough. Um, most of us know, or many of us know, that Elmer T. Lee, there's actually a bourbon named after him, was the master distiller at the George T. Stagg Distillery. And um, he retired, if I correctly remember, in 1985 and was actually a global brand ambassador until 2013 when he died. And he introduced in 1984 the single barrel. So before that, everything was small batch or large batch, however you want to look at it. And especially for the Japanese market, um, Elmer T. Lee said we needed something special. And so he actually dumped or let the bat barrels be dumped by hand. So there's like a trough and there's like coal in there and they dump it and then it flows into this one little pumping station. And they fill up the individual barrels, uh, bottles from that one barrel, maybe Depends on how much juice is still left in there, how much of an angel share has evaporated. Maybe there's only 60 bottles in there. Maybe there's 180. All right. <clears throat> and so um, that's what they did. And this was basically sold on the Japanese market. Many of you in the States know that um, Blanton's used to be very, very difficult to get. It was just sold overseas. <laughs> Which is really, really weird. Hey, Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey you cannot buy in Kentucky. What's going on there? Uh, it was especially made for the Japanese market and also in the European market. We had the, a few years later, we had the um, Blantons. And uh, we always called it over here the hand grenade. And the form of the bottle is really cool. And of course, most of you know, there's eight different little figures on here. Blantons, B L A. N-T-O-N-S, and each and every single one of these show a different stage of a race, like at the Kentucky Derby. You see the horse prance, and then start, and then run, and then you have different things, and you can collect all eight. I basically have right now five, so I'm still working on my collection. All right, so let's see what the nose says. Oh, I love Eagle Rare, and basically the same mash bill. I would say we have down here Buffalo Trace. Eagle Rare, Blanton's, especially from the price point. And I get a lot of orange peel. Candy, corn, and cotton candy, sugar. A little bit of the wood, a little bit of clover, honey, pecan, as well as a whiff of tobacco leaves. Almost the perfect bourbon. So let's taste it. Now, I love my transitions. If I take an Eagle Rare, for example, it comes in the mouth and does this, it goes up, and then the alcohol kicks in a little bit, and then it actually goes up even higher. There's just transitions along the way. This, it comes into the mouth and does this. There's hardly any transitions at all. It's good. It's at a very high level from the beginning to the end. But there's no transition. It doesn't go from here to there and then does this again. It just comes in and you have that sugar, cotton candy, candy corn. You have the, the little bit of wood. You have the clover. You have the honey. 
You have a little bit of the pecan and just and the alcohol of course is there with 50%. It's fairly smooth, especially for the 50%. It's very smooth actually. Smooth and soft. And just stays like that even afterwards. Oh, oh just right here. Smooth and soft and a little bit of a burn. Just right. Now there's one little problem with this bottle. First of all, there's only 300 bottles of these actually produced. And the second one is 99 euros. Translated into about 110 bucks. That's a lot. I can get this one little bottle here. I know it's only 40 um, proof, but I can get this for like $38 over here. I can get the gold for like $45. This would be very, very nice at 49 euros. That would be the perfect price point over here. And I think most of my American friends are going, 45 bucks for Blanton? Are you crazy? That's like dirt cheap. Well, I'm sorry. I'm the dumb American over here in Germany and alcohol is fairly cheap over here. And therefore I can get a gold for less. And so why not compare? I'm still adding a few dollars extra to the gold. Um, I think I'd rather have the gold to be honest. I don't have any left. I drank it and also did my bottle shares with all my friends over here. So um, interesting stuff, I must admit. If you're ever in, at the um, M&P Wine and Spirits Festival in Poland, um, try it. Maybe even bring a bottle home. It's going to be a very exotic and rare whiskey. That's what I love testing, tasting. Tasting as well as testing. So, Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany. I love tasting exotic and rare whiskeys. Blanton is a little bit exotic. The M&P edition with 300 bottles worldwide is very, very, very rare. And fortunately, I have a friend that was at the festival and I got this bottle. At least what's, rest, what's left of it. Thank you very much for tuning in. I will be having my videos on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And I look forward to hearing from you. Write something in, your, in the comments about the most exotic Blantons you've ever tried. As well as maybe what do you think? Should there be more Blantons in the States? Alright, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe and also like the video if you'd be so kind. See ya! Thank you.